In the summer of 1963, when we were acquiring this land, we, uh, I took my wife and three children on the only family trip we ever took to Europe, the only trip I ever took to Europe except on business, I think. And we were gone six weeks, and we went to the new towns in England, and we went to Vallingby and Farsta in Sweden. Uh, we went to, to Norway and Denmark, and uh, we had a marvelous trip. At the same time, Mort went down to Italy and went to look at the new towns in Italy. We met in, uh, in uh, Copenhagen, I guess maybe it was, and reviewed what we'd seen. It had been a terrific disappointment because we each held these very uh, uh, clear images of what we hoped for, that a city would be made a place that worked in the best possible way for the people who lived there. And um, when we got to the new towns in England, they'd all been designed by architects, engineers, bureaucrats, uh, and so had they in Sweden. That We kept hoping that there was going to be some dialogue between um, biologists, sociologists, psychologists, psychiatrists, ministers, doctors, people who really knew about people in the design of a town, and it wasn't anywhere. Um, when we got back, we determined to, to change that. We said to ourselves, and with plenty of justification, we don't know enough to build a city. Uh, we've got we've to learn. And, uh, and we decided to put together what became a work group of 14 people. We uh, identified subjects about which these people had to be informed, education, health, religion, transportation, employment delinquency. <coughs> and we uh, all got on the telephone, particularly Bill Finley and Mort, and they would call people who might know people, and uh, they'd ask, they'd say what we were looking for, and as they got names, they'd put them down. And whenever the same name came up two or three times, that became a candidate, until finally we had these candidates across the board. We also had a second choice candidate in each category. We then went to work. We decided we would we would hire them. We'd pay them $200 a day, which was a hell of a lot of money back then. It was like paying $1,000 a day now. And uh, every single person we asked accepted. No second choices ever were called upon. We, uh, I'd had a, and while I was gone that summer, I received a letter from uh, the president of the University of California at Berkeley. They had, uh, uh, California had become the largest state in the nation in the 1960 census, and they decided to do a series of conferences on the, on the issues of population growth, and one was on metropolitan growth. And I was invited to make the keynote speech in Berkeley. Nobody knew we were planning a new town. Had no idea. We hadn't disclosed it to anyone. And here in in uh, July or August of that year, I got this letter. It was almost like the Lord speaking. That <laughs> I had to really start thinking about this. And it was, it was great good fortune because I really did think and work on it that summer on, on what is the purpose of a city? Why build a city? What would be the highest achievement of a city? Remember now, this was 1963. This was the tumultuous 60s, and it was out at Berkeley, which was as tumultuous as any place could be. And the more, and I, and I wrote that, that talk. I have that talk if you want it. You, you're free to get a copy of it. Um, but uh, in searching for the purpose of city, and I said at the beginning of the talk, if that's what I'd been doing, and I had found that, that uh, um, what to me was the, was the uh, direction um, for a city, and that I had found it in a verse in the Bible, that uh, to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and all thy mind and all thy soul and all thy strength, and to love thy neighbor as thyself. And, that, uh, uh, and I went on to say that if, that if that became the purpose of planning, it's not a goal you'd reach, uh, but when you sailed a boat, you didn't reach the North Star either, but you sailed by it. It was the North Star that gave you the sense of direction, and that this should be the North Star of planning. And if it were, you would then be planning 
for, I'd said earlier, the purpose of a city ought to be to grow people. But what kind of people? Tall people, healthy people, bright people, uh, what kind of people? And it was then that I said that I, in searching for that answer, I came upon that biblical verse. And that if that were the, the ultimate purpose of planning, you would then be looking to grow people who were, who were creative, tolerant, caring, uh, and I went through these, these values that would be represented, and that how different that city would be uh, if that were your purpose, and how you would then try to, to uh, plan it physically so that it enabled that, and you would, you would uh, try to build the structures within the city, the institutions that would enable that, that kind of relationship among people. And we sent that talk and some other outlines we had done of, of the city and its issues and opportunities to all of these 14 people who were coming on a Thursday to Baltimore. That afternoon, Bill Finley and Mort Hoppenfeld came in, shuffled in my office, and I could tell something was on their mind. And I finally said, what, what is it that's worrying you? And they said, well, you know, these are very sophisticated people coming to dinner tonight. And I said, yes. And, uh, I, they said, will you not talk about love? And I said, uh, I promise not to embarrass you. I will not talk about love. So we went to dinner, and I, I decided at dinner to ask each person around the table. I said, you all know what we're here for. Uh, you've all read some, at least, of the stuff we sent. Just off the top of your head, say how you feel about this. And around the table, without a single exception, Everybody was saying why it couldn't be done. It was, it was rhetorical. It was like, what are you going to do about black people? How are you going to handle race? Um, how are you going to handle delinquency? What are you going to do about transportation? Every single question was a, was a negative question. And at the end of that dinner, I said that I, this is the worst night I've ever spent in my life. That uh, here we have this purpose. We've, uh, uh, we've solicited your working with us, uh, you're being paid to work with us, you've said you believe, and yet uh, all that, I, that you've said are the negative reasons why this can't be done, why it's futile. And uh, we went to work the next morning, and uh, all day long, same thing. Never got, never got off of anything but, but negative questions. And it was finally midway through Saturday morning when finally this um, uh, a wonderful, uh, very devout Jew who was on the, on the work group. Mm. Anyway, he leaned across, he's a very quiet man, he leaned across the table and he said, we've missed the whole purpose of this. What we're being asked to do is to help design a city that will nourish love. <laughs> and Bill Finley, Mort Hoppenfeld were sitting behind me. I didn't dare turn around. <laughs> I had absolutely nothing to do with it. <laughs> He'd come upon it on his own. 